Welcome to this talk entitled Planning for Your Future Healthcare. My name is Bettina Korn and I'm a nurse at St. James's Hospital in Dublin. I regularly present a talk on this topic to participants in the pulmonary rehabilitation program in my hospital. I'm therefore delighted to have the opportunity to be presenting this topic to you today. This talk was initially developed together with participants in the pulmonary rehab program who wanted to talk about concerns that they had about planning for their future with their illness. Please be aware that this talk might bring up some emotions for you, and that is normal. Acknowledge them, sit with them, and then talk afterwards to someone you trust. Abraham Lincoln once said that the most reliable way to predict the future is to create it. And why is that important? We all make choices in our life all the time. Our ability to choose gives us freedom. Making decisions allows us to exercise our autonomy. Many people plan for the future, for instance, by saving for a rainy day, contributing to a pension, or by making a will. Planning for the future should also include talking to your family and doctors about your wishes and preferences should you become seriously unwell and unable to communicate for yourself. This talk is about the different choices available to you to plan for your future health care. This talk is for all people, but in particular for people with chronic conditions such as COPD and their families. Have you ever asked yourself, what would happen if you were to become seriously unwell and too sick to talk to your doctor about your treatment and care? Who will make the decisions for you? How would they know what you would want? And would they all be in agreement with each other? So these are important things to talk about at a time when we are well and able to make decisions for ourselves. Advanced care planning is the medical term for future health care planning. It describes voluntary discussions over time about future care. It's a process and not a task, and it may be more than one conversation. We should start advanced care planning when we know things may change in the future and when we know decision-making in the future may become difficult. Advanced care planning is a process that supports people who wish to make a health care plan for a time when they may be unable to make their own decisions. It helps to ensure a person's choices are known and respected. It also makes things easier for a person's family by preventing confusion and conflict over medical decisions. Engaging in advanced care planning can result in one or all of the following the creation of a will, the setting up of an enduring power of attorney, which is a legal document that sets out who you would like to manage your legal and financial affairs and certain personal care decisions for you when you reach a point where you cannot make these decisions for yourself. It is recommended that advanced care planning should also include the setting up of an advanced health care directive and a completed think-ahead form and I will discuss these last two items in some more detail. Advanced care planning involves four key steps. Firstly, think about what you value in life and what you understand about your health condition. Then, talk about your visions and concerns with someone you trust and with your doctor. Then, tell your family, your designated healthcare representative, and your doctors what you would want and not want in terms of treatment and care. And finally, record your wishes and preferences in a document that is easily accessible when it's needed. We recommend to document your wishes and preferences in this Think Ahead form. The form is available from the Irish Hospice Foundation and can also be completed electronically. You may also ask your pulmonary rehabilitation staff for a copy. The form includes an advanced healthcare directive, which is compliant with the Assisted Decision-Making Capacity Act 2015. 
An advanced healthcare directive is where you write down what you would not like to happen in relation to certain medical treatments. This includes, for instance, cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR, artificial invasive ventilation or artificial nutrition. You can nominate a designated healthcare representative to speak for you if a time comes when you can no longer speak for yourself. This person will act on your behalf in relation to healthcare decisions when you lack capacity. This person is responsible for ensuring that your advanced healthcare directive is complied with. An advanced healthcare directive comes into action only if you are no longer able to communicate for yourself. You can change your advanced healthcare directive anytime. It is important to regularly check it is still reflecting your wishes and preferences. Make sure your family and healthcare providers are aware that you have an advanced healthcare directive. Advanced care planning is relatively new to us here in Ireland. There are some misconceptions about this topic which may make people worry about it. These misconceptions are not true, so please take some time to read this slide in detail. I recommend this booklet entitled Planning for the Future with COPD to you. The booklet was developed by people with COPD and family carers of people with COPD. It is available from the Irish Hospice Foundation and COPD Support Ireland. The booklet explains in great detail all the steps involved in planning for the future. It also provides testimonials from people with COPD and family carers why they think this is an important topic to think and talk about. People who have already planned ahead report feeling relieved that arrangements are in place. They also report being able to focus on living their life rather than worrying about the future. They say that it creates opportunities to do enjoyable things, to say important things to people you care about, to be prepared for various situations that might arise, that it reduces practical and emotional burden on family and friends, addresses concerns and fears you and your loved ones may have, and helps to remain in control at a time when this may become limited, for instance, during a crisis situation, and to enjoy life knowing that important things have been discussed. There are a range of reliable resources about this topic available, which are listed on the following two slides. Concluding this talk, I hope that you have gained an understanding of what advanced care planning or planning for your future healthcare is about. Ultimately, it is all about you remaining in control of your choices throughout your life. This can be achieved by thinking about what these choices are, to talk about them with people you trust and your healthcare providers, and to document them. Starting that conversation can be the most difficult part, but once you start it, it's easier to come back to, and you will find that others may actually want to talk about this topic too. Think about what is important to you. Remember your decisions may change over time, and that is quite normal. So it's important to review your advanced care plan regularly, so your decisions are up to date. If this talk has made you feel sad or emotional in any way, let me say this is quite normal. This is a difficult and important topic that you may never have thought about before. Make sure you talk to someone about it, for instance, a friend or family member you trust, a member of the pulmonary rehabilitation team, your GP or respiratory doctor, or to the COPD advice line on 1-800-832-146. I wish to acknowledge the significant contributions made by members of the Working Group from COPD Support Ireland and the Irish Hospice Foundation, who collaborated on developing the booklet Planning for the Future with COPD, 
which is reflected in this talk. I thank Deirdre Shanahar, formerly of the Irish Hospice Foundation, for her support and advice and leadership on advanced care planning, and the Irish Hospice Foundation for their successful and important Think Ahead campaign. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>